Welcome to the Checkered Flag, the official podcast of Finish Line Racing, a Forza test drive and F1 community. So it's me, John, here, and uh, so I had the pleasure of uh, speaking with Matt Farah from TheSmokingTire.com, and uh, he was running in the 2010 Bull Run, Bull Run Rally with his uh, 2011 Shelby GT500 from Black Magic, and uh, so it was really nice of him to, uh, you know, allow the interview, and so we did it over Skype. That was really cool. And, uh, you know, with a little editing, I think uh, it came out pretty good. Of course, uh, he had to take a phone call, so I just edited that out and uh, some other things to uh, make it more um, family-friendly, we could say. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was a really good experience, he said. And, um, of course, now here's the interview. It's going to be all the testosterone in the sports cars. Might have something to do with that. Well, that's good. And uh, so, of course, you had the 2010 Shelby GT500. 2011. And, oh, 2011. My bad. So, right. uh, <laughs> they only drive aluminum engine Mustangs now. Uh, that's true. Yeah, they have that new aluminum engine. And uh, so, just thinking about it, you know, how did you get that design for the GT500? Uh, you mean that, how the stickers looked? Yeah, the vinyls from uh, Black Magic and stuff like that. The the design for the car, uh, Black Magic had a contest called uh, Your Design Our Shine. And uh, they had a contest for people to go to their website and submit their designs for the car. And uh, one guy actually got the top four designs. I think his name was Justin. And uh, they flew him to New York, and they had us install the uh, his design on the car. And most of the design was really good, and we used it. There were a few parts, like his design had the, uh, the, window, the entire window frame uh, as being white. And that wasn't really doing it for us, so we left that off. But uh, the rest of it was, was pretty spot on. Um, in hindsight, I wish I had some veto power over it because when we actually put the vinyls on the car and got the car to the starting line, we stood there looking at it and we were like, you know, this looks a lot like a bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, uh, it was. I mean, we got pulled over more this week than I've, I've gotten pulled over in the last three years of driving combined. So the car is, is as bullseye as a car gets. It's true, I guess, you know. Also, compared to uh, you know, some of the other cars that they had there, like, what were they, like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, and uh, Aston Martins? Um, there were two Aston Martins, yeah. Ice-T had a V8 van <laughs> yeah. and these other guys um, who were cops, <laughs> or somehow very closely co- related to cops. Oh, that uh, Dodge Charger? Was it um, that one? That- Oh, the, no, no, no. The Aston Martins were, was a cop. Um, oh, it then, was. Uh, okay. One was a cop. The other one plays a cop on TV. And, oh. <laughs> uh, and so there were also uh, two or th- uh, three Ferraris, maybe four. There was a few Mustangs, a um, bunch of Mer- uh, different Mercedes, the two or three C63 uh, tuned up cars, quite a few Porsches. And then, you know, some oddball stuff. There was a, there was a Nissan GTR, a big diesel pickup truck. <laughs> uh, of course, the Woo's, uh, the Woo's real cop car, which is was pretty sick. Oh, I saw that when they put that uh, license plate in the back of your car. Oh, the pedophile plates. Yeah. <laughs> they put they put some really good ones. One of them uh, they put on a uh, on a Ferrari. It said rental. Um, and the other one uh, they put on this kid's uh, car and it said daddy's money. It was, <laughs> they had some they had some really good ones. I like I like harmless pranks like that. They also saran wrapped our car. Oh, that's pretty good. Then. Uh, so is that pretty much the only hijinks going on? Anything else major happening between like the racers? I mean, define hijinks. What do you mean, like crazy <laughs> driving or practical well, jokes? Yeah, more like you know, just not sabotaging, but just you know, making it a little harder for the other person to drive. I mean, the the uh, the taping quarters to the inside of a wheel is always is always a standard <laughs> classic. Usually, people figure that out in three or four miles though, and pull over. Um, there's uh. There have been some pretty serious rivalries in Bull Run. Like last year, um, the Frankel twins booted Wu's car. They put a, a police Ooh. boot on it. Oh, I actually saw that. Yeah, and I then I remember you. in 2007, someone deflated someone's tires all the way. But that, like, that's up like, You know what I mean? There's harmless, fun pranks, and then there's pranks where it's like, come on, really? Like, you have to ruin my morning by making me find air, you know, in yeah. Idaho right now? Like, that's. So, I mean, pranks are all in good fun, but, you know, when it gets, when you're really starting damaging someone's car or really, you know, doing something that they're not going to figure out immediately and laugh at, then it's like, then it just gets over the top, you know? Yeah. So, uh, what would you think more, uh, kind of more hyped up, more exciting would be uh, Bull Run or maybe Gumball? 
Well, they're different. Um, well, as I in know, like, uh, like, you know, you had uh, mostly anyone can join Bull Run. Now they have, you know, standardized, you know, there wasn't like high end cars, or like amazing cars. But, you know, you had, you know, some Ferraris and Lamborghinis. But how is that compared to uh, Gumball? Well, it, just because these guys aren't driving Lamborghinis doesn't mean they're not just as rich as the people who do Gumball. If that's of what course. you're talking about, like people who do Gumball, I, I feel like really should realize that driving three thousand miles in a Ferrari kind of blows. Like <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding. I've driven long distances in Ferraris before, and it's terrible. Like the best car you can bring on this on the rally is something that can handle well and cruise nicely at 120 miles an hour, not look too exotic, uh, black or silver, comfortable seats, great air conditioning, you know, like a like a BMW M6 yeah. or a Bentley GT, like or, or or even you know something more low key like like a Cadillac CTSV is would a, be nice. almost yeah. perfect rally car. And the Frankel twins this year brought a CTSV and won. And I mean. You know, have, a Ferrari is not is not a good idea for the rally. It's obnoxious and loud. You don't want to drive three thousand miles in a Ferrari because it's just too it's too involving for that long of a drive. Yeah. So, um, you know, would you opt out for maybe an RV or a camper? <laughs> Absolutely not. In fact, I wouldn't do an RV because they're just huge. I'm <laughs> thinking next year maybe doing a team short bus and buying a school, <laughs> a school short bus. For like twenty five hundred bucks on eBay, might be a good idea. You could always uh, chrome the rims or and uh, maybe add some nos on it. Oh, I mean, dude, you know, there's a whole lot of funny things you can do with a school bus. But after the ridiculous pile of tickets that Tom and I got this year, the only way next year is either we're going for a victory and driving balls out because that's that's the only way to avoid getting tickets. It's the people in the middle of the pack who get tickets. It's not the people in the front and it's not the people in the back. So. You have to be in the front or the back, but, but, you know, and I know Tom is sitting over there at his computer right now editing video thinking we're going for a win, um, but I need to have my license in order to do this job, so I, I don't, and I'm within inches of it right now. Oh, really? So uh, what happens with the tickets? Do you pay them or does Black Magic? I love how everyone thinks Black Magic is going to pay our tickets. <laughs> that's, that's like the funny, when you see the commenters on my videos and they're like, Oh yeah, Black Magic's covering his tickets, no problem. And I'm just like, are you nuts? Like, what company would pay for something like that? It's true. I guess they don't want that rep on them anyway. No, but, uh, of course not. Of course not. So, how many tickets did you get in total? Uh, between Tom and I, in uh, in eight days, we got an even ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was probably the most severe you got. Um, Tom would have to take credit for, well, it's actually, it's almost a dead, e dead even split between Tom and I. Tom got, um, uh, criminal racing on a highway in Arizona, <laughs> which is a misdemeanor with a mandatory court appearance. Um, and I got in New Jersey in like the first 10 minutes of the rally, uh, three tickets at once. Wow. Reckless, a hundred in a 65 mile an hour zone <laughs> and unsafe passing all at once. Okay, so, uh, well, what would you think probably the worst thing that happened there at the bull run compared, you know, uh, maybe police activity or maybe uh, incidents that happened? Well, you know, this is my third year doing it and Tom's second year doing it, and we learned a lot this year, um, mainly that if you're the kind of guy who drives in the middle of the pack, which means you're going fast but you're not doing anything really stupid like passing on shoulders and stuff like that, like, we had a no-shoulder passing rule in our car because I, I honestly feel like that's just flagrantly that's little, unsafe. Yeah. And even if drivers ahead of you see you coming fast, like, no one really expects you to go for the shoulder move. Yeah, and you so, never know. Yeah, so, but so, a lot of people do. I mean, a lot of people do, but we don't. And consequently, we, you know, we ended up in the middle of the pack. So what happens is the cars out front are driving crazy and everyone with a cell phone is calling the cops. And... The cops don't get there fast enough to catch those guys. They get there fast enough to catch the people behind them, mainly us. So, <laughs> Is this actually, uh, you know, police actually set up for this? Like they know what's going on or is it just uh, oh, dude, a surprise like half thing? The guys, half the guys on the rally have police scanners in the car. And, and we didn't this year. We will in the future for sure. But, I mean, you know, within t 
30 seconds of the green flag every morning. These cars are booking it up the highway, and some of them are doing crazy stuff. And everyone's got a cell phone. And when you, if, if you were just a regular old lady taking your kids to school and saw what was going on in the first five or ten minutes of every leg, you'd probably call the cops too. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was actually, um, I was thinking of going down to the pier and uh, watching you guys take off. But, uh, of course, you know, with all the police activity and stuff, it's not the uh, best place to do if you want to have some fun, you know. Well, the, the good news is the, the cops knew what we were doing, and the pier was only about 10 blocks total from the Holland Tunnel. Oh, that's good. So once you're out of the Holland Tunnel, you're in New Jersey, and you're no one's problem anymore. Uh, you know, having said that, I was the first person to get ticketed on the rally this year, and it was <laughs> within, about, within about five miles of the Jersey border. So, well, you know... Uh, so, when you think about it all in all, what was uh, probably the best experience you had driving? Well, just driving? or I mean, the best, honestly, I think the best thing about the rally is, is some of the people that are on it. You know, when you go a few years in a row, you really make some good friends. And, and we, Tom and I, just, we, you know, we have a great time doing it because it's like, it's like every time you go, you don't see these people for a year, but then you're, you know, you're right back there with them, you know, and, and, the driving's great. I mean, our, America is like is such a huge place. America is such a beautiful place, and so many people just fly over the middle of it and don't actually stop in places like Omaha, you know, <laughs> or or and and some of these places are really nice. They're really fun. It's a great it's a great great way to see the country with a big group of people that all you know love cars and road trips and you know. It's it's really it's a it's an amazing experience. Over it's hard to pin down one specific best experience. I would say in terms of driving, the, the road from Boulder to Telluride was just about the best day of driving I've ever had. It was like I think it was um, Colorado or or US fifty, and and that was like a hundred miles of perfect roads through beautiful mountains and valleys and rivers, and it was just like. Yep, this is why we took the convertible. That's pretty good. You know, was there any uh, bad weather that you encountered? Oh my God, in Iowa, dude! I'm telling you, we saw some biblical in Iowa. Like what? <laughs> like it was, it was a flood. If you've ever seen a flood, you know, when you think about it, what what would you if you couldn't drive your GT500? Would you possibly want to drive your own car? Like, would you risk never, that? Never, no. ever, ever, ever. You wouldn't want to risk it. That's Unless I'm so rich, I just don't give it. I will never, as long as, as, as I live, drive my own car in the rally. And probably not even then. Okay, so, um, but were there any major problems with the GT500? Any, uh... uh no, I mean, mechanically, that car is, is as rock solid as they come. I mean, I know, I know the chief design engineer at SVT pretty well. I bought a Raptor, like, um, you know, I, I... These cars are built, um to be abused and the SVT does a really good job of putting absolutely bulletproof drivetrains in their cars and you can yeah. just, you can whip the shit out of them and uh, and they'll take it yeah uh, the GT500 was great I mean uh, we had um, somehow we must have hit a pothole or something in Iowa and we blew a valve stem and it was leaking air so we had a uh, a local shop change it out on so uh, this concludes the first part of the interview uh, I split it up in half just to make it more manageable about like a half hour or so long uh, with editing. So um, yeah, if you want to check out more, you can always uh, check us out at, on the web at www.flrleague.org. You can always send us an email at podcast at flrleague.org. And uh, thanks to Matt Farah, and uh, so on to the second one.